talk about feed forward acoustic noise cancellation, which is a form of doing acoustic noise cancellation. In fact, arguably one of the most simplest forms of approaching this problem. Because what I really like to be able to do is, for example, get rid of noise cancellation in a headphone. And this is probably one of the toughest of a, of a lot of the problems. You see this problem show up in many other related places, but we're going to look in this case. And this is usually going to be a case I have an input sound, and then I also have this and play out the speaker. And then what I really want is just to go through the speaker is just the sound. I want to hear that and not any of the rest of the world. The problem is there is noise in this world. That's all going to be around it. Noise. I mean, they could be other people. I don't not, no, not disparaging anything. Um, but you want to get everything else to be silent. Well, the problem is that noise then comes through, comes through the system, and then with some transfer function, and combines in. And so what I want to be able to do is, you know, constructively or destructively get rid of that signal. So that way I don't have to worry about it and I only get the sound I'm looking for. That's great, right? Okay, so doing that, there are different ways to approach it. And in a feed forward case, it's a case that I have the microphone sitting outside near where my processing system is, and I can measure that noise. Well, that's great. The problem is the noise inside is different than the noise outside. So I need to have some processing and some computation to create effectively that, that filtering structure to as closely resemble this particular transfer function with as tight a, you know, with as basically as tight um, a functionality with it looking like minimum delay, no more delay, because delay is going to matter, right? Because if things are off, that's not going to work so well. So I have to get all of these things right. Well, this goes with an assumption, at least starting with, that I know what G1 of S is. Now, maybe I can adapt it. That's another discussion of how to think about that. But it's a very simple approach, approach is I'm going to have to deal with this noise going through a, a emulated transfer function. Well, it has its main one going through the headphones. I'm going to create an emulated one that when I then put it into the speaker, these two things, when they combine together within the speaking speaker structure, is basically going to give me zero. I'm going to subtract all of the environment out to the transfer function, and that'll be great. And you're like, that's that works, right? Because all I need, you know, once you know, knowing the, the transfer function of the, of the headphone, I am in great shape. So just all I need to know is that. Unfortunately, that's not always so easy to get, and there's a lot of variability across that. But once I have it, and if I take all the measurements to get it, there's a lot I can do with the system. The problem is, is that there's a lot of variability on those measurements, a lot of variability among different people, because you're not going to make it just for one person, you're just probably making it for a million people. And so it changes a lot in terms of individuals, it changes a lot in terms of the other various systems you might see.